our guests are going to be from Santa Barbara, Nancy Gron and funny man Jim J. Brillick. Hey! 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 We're back. Please welcome my guests from Santa Barbara, Nancy Lee Gron and the irrepressible Jim Bullock. Oh, okay. How you doing? Can you play basketball? I know, I have a Oh, you must. Oh, I had a great night's sleep. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. And I'm glad. You know, in the intro, they said the irrepressible Jim J. Bullock. Mm. Uh, have you ever been repressible? Oh, I think I've been repressed a lot. <laughs> but I guess a lot I've gotten a buy with, too. So <laughs> I don't know. Do you have trouble speaking out? Um, what a lovely segue. <laughs> well, actually, yeah. I do. I have, and I still do, but I'm better. <laughs> Thank we'll be you. Right back. Yes, it's so not the speaking that's the problem, Jim. It's the understanding. No, I, I, have, a, I have a really tough time uh, I have, uh, with confrontation, and I, I have all of my life avoided it at all costs, and, and it has, you know, cost me some mistakes and everything. So I'm, as I'm getting older, and as I'm getting to therapy, oh, God. <laughs> Uh, no, but as I am getting older, I am, I'm trying to uh, change this pattern of my life and, and speak out when I need to speak out. Obviously, it's not working. No, it? and, and so, I, I feel like a candy junkie. Oh. You know, but... Nancy or Nancy Lee? Nancy. Nancy, do you have trouble speaking out? No. <laughs> you no. know, I mean, yes, yeah, sometimes. But um, I, to tell you the truth, I, I, I've always been, I think, somewhat outspoken. But in maturing, hopefully, I've learned to, to, to be discriminating between, like, when it's an issue, an important issue to me, and when it's just an inconvenience. Have there been times when you have said something and then later wish you hadn't? Oh, countless, <laughs> countless, I can't, I, so many, oh, yeah. How about you, Jim, does that ever happen where you, one day you get your courage up and you finally say, rah, 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 and then you have to go, oops, I didn't No, whenever I've gotten, when, the few times in my life when I've actually exploded, I exploded once with my landlord, I was so happy because I, he pushed me in a corner, he pushed me, he kept pushing me, he kept, and then it was like, ah, this demon came out of my mouth, and it was like, boy, I nailed him against the wall, I felt so good about myself, you know, and, and uh, so no, no, I, I've always had, it's been such a release, it's like sex, uh, it's great, I mean, it's, it's, no, it is, it is really a wonderful release. You should release. try that. Sex? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but really, speaking out during sex, you should try that too. <laughs> oh, yeah. With a microphone. Mr. Microphone. Look, I don't know how you do it, Jim, but you <laughs> Whatever blows your... Uh, uh, whatever blows your skirt up, I guess. Okay. <laughs> have, you, have you ever had traffic situations where you have to yell at another driver where you, do you or they, you've been yelled at and felt like, hey, you shouldn't holler at me? What happened to me, this was uh, about a month ago, I'm getting off the Law Canyon off-ramp, and this woman was driving a, a Mercedes yapping away on the phone. You know, I just see the back of her head going like this. <laughs> she drove me into the bushes, okay, on, on uh, you know, that off-ramp, because she just decided to cut over, and I'm going, I'm honking, I'm honking, and she's... <laughs> and I am in the bushes. 
And she does not notice, because I, I was waiting for a reaction to see how she felt about shoving my car into the bushes. <laughs> and she... <laughs> so I followed her. I mean, I was, I was so angry. This is what I'm It's probably not, in, not appropriate, but so what? I followed her. She turned a few times, turned a few times, and I, I like, honk my horn. I, I honk my horn, and I pull over, and I, and I, I knock on her window. And I'm sure she thinks I'm going to, you know, I, I'm a freeway killer. Right. I don't know. And she, she rolls over, and I said, you must not have a phone in your car. <laughs> you, you, this, you cannot have, this is something you should not do. You, this, you can't, I, you, I was in the bushes, I was in the trees. And, and you know what she did? She just kind of went like this, and she uh, rolled up the window and took off, you know. And she thought I was a maniac, but she didn't understand. Call. Yeah, and she called someone to tell them that this strange woman pulled her over in the car. Call the police. <laughs> that was so great. I admire you for that. Well, I, was, I just, I can't believe it, but anyway. I do that all the time. I really do, and it works a lot better if you're black. <laughs> I mean, you, you turn around in your rearview mirror, and there's this black woman in a car like this. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, you really, it makes you bust it up a little higher. You, all right, I told her. The natural thing is it that maybe that uh, certain children are taught that they should be seen and not heard, whereas other children are encouraged to... How do you feel about that, then, to speak your own mind? You know, I think women... Uh, Jewish women can say what they want. <laughs> I mean, I was right that way. Um, I think culturally, generally speaking, women have been taught to, uh, to, to be quiet. But does that make a woman less attractive to be a little more assertive to say what's on the mind? Oh, absolutely not. Are you attracted to forceful women? I think we, we should all speak out. I think that it's ridiculous okay. that, that, a, that a woman f should feel like, you know, I have to cross my legs like this, okay. and I have to sit like this and not say anything because I'm a woman. I think that's silly. Well, yeah, let them pray, <laughs> baby. <laughs> I mean it. Here, have some candy. Talk about yourself. Me. But it now, let's turn it around. <laughs> are men, are men who are not as assertive less attractive? No. Yes. yes. Do you want a man to be the one to take the initiative and to stand up and say, this is what we should have and blah, 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 blah. No. No. No, no, no. No, no, no I say not. I say not. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think Could, it, I, could you be could you be happy with with a quiet man with a man who was not a wimp? With no. Well, does that make a man a wimp? I think very quiet men are are when they have oh. you know, that witty kind of sense of dry oh. humor that comes up. Excuse me for a minute. Let me slap this. Snap out of it. Here, suck on this. I know you're getting more attractive every moment, Jim. Uh, uh. I want but, you. <laughs> <laughs> We're eventually going to have sex this so morning so. on this show, I feel. But what does... What does... <laughs> does... That's, I guess, the, guess the question we're asking in, in the midst of all of this is, does, does a man who doesn't speak out, does that make him a whip? Does that no. make him less well, that's attractive? that's nonsense. To, uh, no, that's nonsense. Okay, well, we'll come back and ask you guys about that in a minute, but we'll, we'll talk about that when you have to speak up, like now, and we'll go to commercial and be back. <laughs> We're back, and we've been having a ball with my guest, Jim J. Bullock and Nancy Lee Grand, and we've been talking about asserting yourself and speaking up, and before we went to commercial, we were talking about if a man doesn't speak up, is he a wimp? And you say no, and the audience says yes. yes. Why is a man who doesn't speak up a wimp? Huh? Wait a minute. You can run over him. A wimp. Huh? Wait a minute. You can run over him, but I'm going up here to the wimp in the back. <laughs> to the what? To the wimp in the back. <laughs> How you doing? 
No, I'm wonderful. A lot of times uh, a guy who doesn't speak up can be considered or perceived as being a wimp, and it could affect him in his business. Many times he might be passed over for promotions. He might not get a beautiful woman. He might not ever even have sex if he doesn't be assertive. You've got to ask for what you want. Okay, all right. Well, all right. <laughs> can you be... Is the phrase brutally honest, is that too honest? Well, yeah, you, you don't yeah. want to hurt somebody's feelings. Well, really. how do you know? Well, that's, you kind of know. Okay, well, that's true. hold up, stand up. That's true. Stand up. You can do what? You can hurt their feelings just as bad if you don't say something. That's just as, just as deceptive. That's like lying, you know, to your friend. That's just as bad. But you have to think about, you have to ask yourself, will it really matter to them? I mean, if, you're, if you don't like somebody's suit, you know, I, what, well, is that going to help that person in his life or not to say that? It'll probably help them not wear their suit. <laughs> probably, probably. It's true. So. If they look really bad and you're just trying to be sensitive about their feelings, they're going to feel so much better if they have a hot suit on and they look hot. <laughs> so you might need to say that to them. Okay. You have it. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. We've got the sisters down here going, oh, oh. No, wait a minute now. There, come on. Yeah, put the butts in it. But that's your opinion of how his suit looks. Okay? Just because you don't like my suit, someone else may like my suit. I might like my suit. That's your opinion. Right. Okay. Are you offended if they don't take that advice? Are you offended if you tell someone who you, you, in their best interest, you've, you know, gotten all your courage up and you've said, okay, that's ugly, and they say that's, that's your opinion, well, I get, and they go out with I it I get anyway. offended very easily, so I just try to, you know, I, you, you, you can't, no. Wouldn't they hurt your feelings? I try. Well, you don't have no problem talking back to your mama. How you <laughs> But how do you, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, how do you tell somebody, you hurt my feelings? You just tell them. Okay, now, but you were talking earlier about your mother and your daughter, right? right? And your mother would say yes, and you would, and you would say no, right? Right. What happens when it's, your, your daughter has a daughter? Okay. And you say that her, your, the granddaughter should be able to go, and your daughter says no. Are you going to understand like you think you, your mama should understand? Yes, I am. I have to live as though, you know, I'm going to want them to live. And I have to be open. So, yeah, yes. yes. If, I say it, if I say it to my daughter, if I say no, and then my daughter, I say, yeah, let her go. And she says, no, Mom, then I am going to say, hey, I allowed myself that right. I'm going to have to allow that. All right. But I'm going to tell you this. Wait a minute. You're on tape with this. Okay. All right. Now, when your daughter, how old is she now? She's going to be 12. When she's in another eight years or so, or ten years, and she's got a little girl, I want her to be able to play this tape back at you and say, you said. I do, too. I do, too, because then I'll be living honestly. <laughs> if she doesn't, I'm going to be living dishonestly. And if I don't give anything to my child, I need to give as much honesty as I can. I can only do that from myself as a parent. So are you being dishonest if you don't speak up? Yes. Oh, uh -huh. I guess so. All right. Well... You know, I'm going to tell you a true story. I met a woman once who told me that her mother, there was a similar situation. Her mother said that her daughter, you know, could do something and she didn't agree. And anyway, her, her mother slapped her Ooh. in front of her daughter. And she said that because her daughter was there, she slapped her mother back. <laughs> now, <laughs> I was like sitting there across the table going... <laughs> Because if I slap my mother back, I would expect a big hand to come out the sky and just wash me in the ground yeah. and leave a, a little puddle. But oh, is that going too far? I mean, where do you draw the line? She felt just as strongly as you do. No, I think I would ask my mom to leave. And that way you're showing your child you do have control over your household, but you're not disrespecting your parent in front. Because if you slap your mom in front of your child, when your child gets big, she might slap you. So. All right. Well, we'll come back and wrap this all up after these commercials. <laughs> We're back, and we've been talking about speaking out and speaking up for yourself. And I guess we all know we have to honor our parents, but you do have to sometimes say, what's on your mind? 
But don't hit your mama. <laughs> That's not nice. Anyway, thank you very much, Jim J. Bullock, for being uh, here. Please don't shoot me with the water. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think of it. I w I'm just going to sit here and read this Elvis magazine. <laughs> And you know, you know what? I think what we also learned in this show is that if you need somebody to speak out for you, hire a black woman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, who knows? I mean, now I know. Nancy Lee Grant, thank you for You're being good. here. Thank you for being thank here, you. and thank you. We'll be back with more interesting people and talk about more interesting stuff. Have a real good day. <laughs> The Marsha Warfield Show is a Klein and Friends production in association with Backburner Productions.